This is 2, 9, the derivative as a function, content objective 2, which is to now sketch the derivative function when you're given information about the original. When we're done, we want to be able to discuss the relationship between the graphs of the original and its derivative. So we'll begin with this example 1, which says we want to find f prime of x if f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 3. And we have a picture of this function here in our notes. So our goal is to sketch sketch both f and f prime on the same graph and then talk about what we notice. So first we're going to find the derivative of f. In order to do that, I need to apply that definition of the derivative, which is f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of an x plus h squared minus a 2 times an x plus h plus a 3, and then I'm going to subtract what comes out of the function when I plug in an x, and I'll remember to put parentheses around that entire thing so that I have correct signs for each of my terms. If I do this correctly, then when I multiply out, everything that doesn't have an h in it should disappear. So I'll have a limit as h approaches 0 of an x squared plus a 2xh plus an h squared minus a 2x minus a 2h plus a 3. Distribute that negative of a negative x squared plus a 2x minus a 3. And notice that everything that doesn't have an x in it will dis or an h in it will disappear. So x squareds go, the 2x's go, and the 3's go. So what I have left is that h times a 2x plus an h minus a 2 all over an h. The h's will now cancel and I can compute the limit. If I plug h equals 0 into this, I get a 2x minus 2. So I've just determined that the derivative function is a 2x minus 2 and we want to graph it and then talk about what's happening. So I have this graphed for us. We can pull this up. Here was our original function. And then we have that 2x minus 2. So y intercept of 2 and a slope of, or excuse me, y intercept of negative 2 and a slope of positive 2. Now what I want to look here is at the outputs of the blue, so I'm looking at the y coordinates versus the slope of the original curve. If we look at this original curve here, we can see that the slope is negative, and if we go to the same x coordinate down to the blue, we can see that we have a negative output on the blue when the red has a negative slope. Notice that this slope is steep, which means the blue y coordinates are have a large magnitude in the negative direction. And as we start to turn this corner, our tangent lines are getting more and more shallow. And as they become more shallow through here, we can see at the corresponding y coordinate on the derivative graph that the magnitude is getting smaller. And notice here that we have a slope of 0. We could draw a little tangent line here. I don't know if it will let us do that doesn't look like it will. I can't draw on this. But if we were to sketch a tangent slope right here, we could see that the slope is 0, and it corresponds to an output of 0 on that derivative function. Once we turn the corner, now our slopes are positive. So on this side of the graph, the slopes are positive. So if I pick an x-coordinate and go to the corresponding location on the blue derivative graph, we can see that the y-coordinate on the blue is positive when the slope on the red is positive. Notice here we're shallow, so the magnitude of these y-coordinates is small. And as this gets steeper and steeper, then the magnitude of the blue y-coordinates at the same locations get larger. So what we want to be able to say off of this is that if f prime of a equals the slope of f when x equals a, and f prime of a is the y-coordinate on that derivative function, then the slope on the original graph and the y-coordinate on the derivative graph will have the same value. Slope on here is going to match the y-coordinate on the derivative graph. Let's look at example 2. Example 2 has a graph of f given to us, and we don't have anything analytical, we don't have any data, all we've got is the picture. And based on the picture alone, we want to be able 
to sketch the graph of the derivative. So that means we need to get y coordinates that are the same as the slope of this picture. And the x coordinates will stay the same. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate the easy slopes to identify. And those are the zero slopes. Notice that I'd have a horizontal tangent line here, I'd have a horizontal tangent line here, and I'd have a horizontal here. So if we choose those x coordinates, then where the x coordinates have that slope of 0, that's where we're going to have x intercepts on the derivative graph of f. So now in between these 0 slopes, we need to think about what's happening with the slopes of the original. Here my slopes are all negative, and they start pretty steep and then they get progressively more shallow as we start to round this corner. So that means the magnitude of the y coordinates is going to start large and become small as we get closer and closer to that horizontal tangent. So that means graphically on f prime we're going to start far away from the x axis and we're going to get increasingly closer until we hit that point. Now once we hit this point, now we're at the horizontal tangent. And in between those two horizontal tangents, we have positive slopes. We're shallow near the horizontals and we're steep in the middle. So that means the magnitude of the positive y coordinates on the graph of the derivative will start close to the x-axis, then they'll get a little farther away, and then they've got to get close again. If we look between here, between these two horizontal tangents, we can see that the graph has negative slopes. So the graph of the red curve, or the graph of the derivative, needs to dip below the x-axis. Again, we're steepest in the middle and shallow toward the edges, so we'll be farthest away from the x-axis in the middle and then closer on the edges. Lastly, we have this section of the graph after this horizontal tangent. We can see that all the slopes are positive. We start with shallow slopes and we get steep, so we'll have small magnitude outputs and then we'll have high magnitude outputs. Now I was a little shaky at the beginning, but we can see that the original graph looked like a W, which was probably a degree 4 polynomial, and then our derivative function looks a lot like a cubic. So we're going to start to pay attention to that pattern as we move further into the course. With example 3, we now want to match the graphs to their derivative. Well looking here, we can see that we have two horizontal tangents, so that means we would expect to have two x-intercepts. This doesn't have any x-intercepts, this only has one, this one has three, ah, here we have two. So let's verify that this would be a good derivative for this one. Prior to this horizontal tangent, I had positive slopes, so that means the graph of the derivative should be above the x-axis prior to that first zero. In between this horizontal tangent and this one, we have negative slopes, so that means in between this x-coordinate and this x-coordinate, the graph of the derivative should be underneath the x-axis. Lastly, as we move past this horizontal tangent, we have positive slopes, so that means the graph of the derivative should be above the x-axis. So we can say that 1 matches with d. As we look at number 2, we see that there's only one horizontal tangent, but that these are awfully shallow. So we would expect to see one x-intercept and then y-coordinates that are getting really close to the x-axis. So again, we're going to count x-intercepts, and we see that b is a good contender. Now why b makes sense for us is that prior to this horizontal tangent, my slopes are negative. So here we've got curve underneath the x-axis, and after this horizontal tangent, the slopes are positive. So we have curve on the derivative above the x-axis. And if we look at the behavior in the positive and negative regions, we can see that we have the biggest magnitude y coordinates at the same places that we have the steepest slopes. So in number 2, we're going to match with b. With number 3, which is kind of a weird one, we see that we have a constant linear slope here. So this would be a positive number that then changes very abruptly to a negative and then changes again very abruptly to a positive. So here we saw a positive with a very abrupt shift to a negative with a very abrupt shift to a positive. So 3 is going to match with A. By 
process of elimination, we can say that 4 is going to match with C. And if we think about example 2, we had a W, which was a quartic that turned into a cubic. And I'll let you go through the reasons as to why that matches up. So you have some notes web exam problems to do, and then I would like you to be able to discuss the relationship between the graphs now of the original function and its derivative. So we've talked about the relationship between the domains. Now we want to talk about the relationships between the graphs.